Hello everyone, welcome to today's event. It is the final event of 2022 for Karma, how to boost your mental health during times of uncertainty. So really excited to get into the content today and so pleased to have many of you joining live and some of you may be joining afterwards watching this recording. So I hope you find lots of value from today's session. And um, so my name is Tanya Diggory. I'm the founder and director of Karma and we are a UK based global uh, mental health and wellbeing training organization. So we support uh, companies and individuals all around the world. And we do this primarily through um, supporting professionals, business teams, entrepreneurs, with helping them support their mental health and wellbeing through burnout prevention training, through workplace training courses, events, um, online courses as well. And uh, we, we love to support people in this way. We really do believe in nurturing good mental health and talking about mental wellness and opening up more meaningful conversations about that and what that means. And so our big message is around prevention of burnout. So preventing things from getting to be an issue um, in the first place and knowing what you can do to better support your mental health on a regular basis. And as a result, this will boost productivity and you know, increase your creativity, help strengthen your focus. So, so many benefits that relate to how well you work as well as how well you're feeling in yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, today we're gonna get into some content around how to boost your, your mental well-being um, during times of uncertainty. So there's no doubt about it, there's for many reasons a lot of uncertainty going around in our global economy these days, whether it's politically, whether it's to do with energy crisis, there's so many things that understandably are leading people to feel a little bit out of control in their circumstances. And so what I'm hoping to achieve for you all today is to give you some resources that you can take away and implement straight away for yourselves and um, to give you some ideas and techniques to help you feel a little bit more in control of your state and what you can do to support your mental health, um, no matter what comes your way in life. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen with you all. So hopefully you can see that. And just as a reminder, for those of you who have tuned in to one of our events before, you may know this already, but our philosophy at Karma is that a happy mind makes for a happy business. So when you are nurturing your mind, looking after yourself, it has a direct impact on how effective you feel in your work and how productive you are and how much you can connect with others and yourself. So today I'm going to share some statistics on uh, the latest status around remote working, hybrid working, office working, because that's also an area of life at the moment that is creating a bit of uncertainty for people and um, for many employers, you know, knowing what to do and what's the most effective route to take for their staff, uh, depending on your industry and what makes sense to you as a business, um, whilst also recognising that many people have found so many benefits from remote and hybrid working over the last couple of years as a result of the pandemic. So there's no right or wrong at this stage, in a sense, because there's lots of benefits, but also things where people find remote hybrid or office working challenging. So it's difficult to please everybody, but there are definitely benefits to highlight. Um, also, we're going to talk about understanding the impact of stress and burnout and ways to prevent it from escalating and look at implementing regular habits that enable you to feel in control of your state and make empowered choices going into the new year and beyond. So let's look at the current state of remote hybrid and office working. So with the time that we have together today, of course, there are so many things that we can touch on, as I mentioned at the beginning, that are creating uncertainty in many people's lives these days, not just in the UK, but all over the world. So we're going to just focus today on, you know, what might be feeling a little bit out of our control in the sense of and um, from a work perspective. Um, but you can also very much relate the exercises that I'll be sharing with you today um, to various different circumstances um, or, you know, global issues that you're feeling nervous about or anxious about and, and how those exercises can help you to feel a little bit more in control of your state. So with the Office of National Statistics, um, they did a 2022 study this year on the status of remote, hybrid and office working and what is coming out um, from people's experiences of working in these various ways. So from this study, almost half of those who worked from home in some capacity reported that it actually improved their well-being. They felt more of a sense of ownership or autonomy in their role and um, having a bit more flexibility around their work and being able to get other things done throughout the day. Um, you know, having a little bit more of a, like a lifestyle around their, their work and their commitments. 
More than three quarters of hybrid workers said that being able to work flexibly between the office and home improved work life balance. So again, having that autonomy and that sense of feeling in control of, of different ways of working that might work for you. Uh, knowing that you know you have that option to um, to work from home, but also in the office, and you get the benefits of both, which leads me on to my my next point. So benefits cited for office working included increased connection with teams and having that in person connection that we all do genuinely crave in life and that we do need as human beings um, to different degrees, and having clear boundaries between work and home life. So as much as there are multiple benefits surrounding working from home and hybrid working there's no doubt about it that studies are also showing that there are of course benefits to office working too um so for example like remote and hybrid working has in some ways led to a bit of a blurring of work-life boundaries so that's where people are finding it difficult and where it can create a bit of anxiety and that feeling pressure to always be available online as well as an increase of in some cases unpaid overtime in work hours. So feeling that um, pressure, whether it's a pressure you put on yourself or perhaps you're feeling from others, um, to always be switched on. And so having digital technology devices that are prompting you and having notifications, and if there's no switch off with that, then that seeps into your personal life um, and it can make it difficult for people to switch off. So that's also been cited as a challenge as much as people are finding benefits of, of remote and hybrid working, um, that can create a bit of challenge as well. So on that note about notifications, um, I mean, I'm hearing some really empowering examples lately of how people are putting more boundaries in place and, you know, giving themselves a cut off time in the evenings, for example, um, of when they just switch off from emails and, um, you know, having a very like clear boundary around when they're starting work the next day and, you know, making sure they're planning things in their personal lives to look forward to so that it doesn't, um, the work doesn't distract them from other things that are also important in their lives. So it's important to recognize how the impact of consistent notifications can have um, potentially a detrimental effect on our mental health. So what happens when we receive notifications? It does release a hormone in the brain called dopamine, um, which is a neurotransmitter associated with reward seeking behaviors and addiction. So when we're talking about social media platforms, for example, you know, it's not, it stands to reason that it is a very addictive um, stimulus, you know, and it's something that you have to be mindful of in, in how, um, what your relationship is like to that, um, because those constant notifications um, does spark this in the brain. Um, so like drug or alcohol addiction, notifications can actually make us feel great when we're receiving them, but then we experience negative feelings of withdrawal when we're not receiving them, but also depending on what the impact is. So if it's a positive impact, like, you know, doing really well in a work project, and so those notifications keep coming in and there's this, it's just, you know, challenging to keep up, but actually it's a positive outcome of what it is that you're working on, but it's still seeping into your personal life. Or, um, you know, if it's just that constant um, notifications, but then also it's leading to a challenging outcome from what you're receiving. So you might receive something quite negative or it can impact your mood when you're trying to switch off and have, have time in your personal life in the evening, for example. So there's varying different ways that this can impact you, but also when it's when it's you know nice things that you're receiving um or it's something that that you feel a compulsion to check and um, you can feel that that sense of withdrawal when you're not doing that so it can become quite compulsive and um, so constant information overload also puts our productivity skills at risk so that's also really important to bear in mind and in fact it can take an average of around 25 minutes to get back on task after being interrupted by notification so this isn't even just about um, you know, in your time outside of your working hours and how that's impacting you. But even during your working hours, when you're having those notifications pinging off, you know, flipping that on its head and actually considering well, what about if I choose to go into my notifications rather than them just telling me when a new email's come in or when something else has happened, that creates much more of an empowered stance of managing your tasks and what's actually happening. 
And also on that note, in terms of what else we can do, um, the Mental Health Foundation also has some really great tips um, on sort of, you know, being aware of your limits. So considering how much information and news that you take in um, can reflect how it's affecting you. So have a moment to think about that for yourself. You know, try and accept that with global and national events, especially, when, you know, what I referred to earlier today, that there are things that are out of our control, but we can have a look at what we can control in terms of our response to different situations. Um, it also could be a good idea to to mute or turn off news specifically, not just the notifications I was talking about before, so that you feel in control of as and when you go in to check things, but or just limit reading your news intake that could also be creating a bit of anxiety alongside the day to day life, um, you know, that you're living and um, any challenges that come up with that. Um, so, you know, maybe just limit it to a certain time in the day. Um, also, if a specific to topic comes up that you feel strongly about, or you like, you know, sharing on social media, again, not sort of getting too wrapped up in that and just thinking, you know, what do I need to do? Um, how can I be kind to myself and kind to others? And I think that message of kindness is also really, really important um, because that's something that we can choose. It's, it's a choice that we have to respond in a kind way to ourselves and others. And, you know, it's a practice to tap into. So I hope this is helpful just to give that kind of wider perspective of what we can consider for ourselves when we're looking at how we can boost our mental health whilst we're going through times of uncertainty, whether it's to do with our working patterns, whether it's to do with global events, or other things that happen in, happening in our economy that can be challenging. And um, just these little things are actually very powerful things and can go a really, really long way. So it's worth reminding ourselves that our mental health fluctuates. So we have our state of well-being, which is, you know, our well-being encapsulates how we feel and function on a day to day basis. It's how we feel in terms of our mental health, but also our physical, emotional, social and spiritual health. It's how we feel in terms of what quality sleep we're getting, our diet and our exercise levels. All of these factors contribute and feed into our holistic overall state of health and well-being. But the reality is that our mental health plays a big part in that, because when our mental health is affected, it has a knock on effect on the other aspects of our well-being. Um, so there's a term in neuroscience called the mind body connection, which essentially links to research that highlights the mind really does have the power to either heal or hinder the body. So essentially what we think affects how we feel physically, emotionally, mentally, etc., and and how we behave. So one has a knock on effect to the other. So the reality is that we all have mental health, just like we have physical and emotional health, etc., which stands to reason. You have your body, you have your mind, your brain, your emotions encased in your body, and they're all in constant communication with each other all the time. So our, our mental health is at the state of our mind. What are we thinking? And then how does that lead to how we're feeling at any given moment? So whether we experience states of positive mental well-being or neutral states of mental well-being, where it's not necessarily good or bad, not having to put labels on it, but just is what it is. And maybe you're going through some stresses, but you've got a pretty good handle on it. Or we experience states of poor mental health. And, and that's perfectly normal. It's a very human experience to feel feel low moods to feel anxious to feel worried or overwhelmed um you know we can all experience those feelings so it can really fluctuate up and down and uh, we have a blog on this called the five stages of burnout um to just to, to just highlight what that difference is between stress and burnout because we hear about the two terms together a lot but actually um there's a very big difference between that journey between the onset of stress and actually when it could lead to burnout. So I would really encourage you to take time to read this um, when you have some time. Um, you can search for it on our website. It comes up on Google um, when you write this, uh, this, this title in Google as well. So from the honeymoon phase to onset of stress to chronic stress, burnout and habitual burnout. So with the time we have together today, we don't have too much time to go into this in much detail, but it just gives you an overview um, and, and a framework to, to reflect on. So I'd really encourage in your time um, to just take a read through this blog. And it's based on the Winona State University study on burnout. So we've expanded our research from that. But this just gives you that breakdown of how stress escalates because stress in itself is something we all experience as well. And it can sometimes be a helpful prompt or an indicator to take action on something. But also if it escalates to a high level and it's ongoing and it's unresolved for a long period of time, 
inevitably it starts to lead to higher stress levels, chronic stress, chronic fatigue, which eventually leads to burnout, where you feel mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausted, like a car running with no fuel, and then habitual burnout symptoms, where this is inevitably a time where you'd need to take time off work, and it might lead to higher stresses and um, potentially even um, significant ongoing mental, physical, or emotional problems. Very commonly, you know, depression disorders or anxiety disorders too. So just as the brain has the capacity to um, experience this state, it's important to remember that the brain also has the capacity to change and adapt all the time. It's, it's designed for change, whether we're aware of it or not. So actually, that's really empowering to know that even if we're in a dark place, a really difficult place, um, the brain has the capacity to bounce back from even the most challenging of situations. And it is about finding the right kind of support um, and you know support network, psychological support, um, well-being resources, um, you know, support groups, whatever would work for you to help you um, find the way to sort of find closure in what you're going through. So I hope that's helpful as a, as a model to, to follow. So let's look at an exercise for what can help us um, to strengthen our mental muscles, because when we talk about resilience, well-being and nurturing your mental health, it is a practice. It's not easy and just at the click our fingers okay yeah we're going to do this and great i won't have any problems that's not what it's about because life isn't that straightforward right it is um fluid it moves fluidly it's not um linear you know it it comes in waves and there's different things that happen at different times so what you've got to consider is you know what, what can help you consider is the fact that okay today is a new day so each day you wake up okay, today is a new day and i can approach this day in this way and i'm going to take control in how i'm going to choose to respond um, to different situations now again this isn't easy to do but with practice and with time you can essentially start to strengthen new neural pathways in the brain new mental muscles so to speak in the brain linked to your behavioral habits your thinking patterns etc that that make it more natural for you over time to to approach situations in a way that's healthy for you and that is kind to yourself and others so this is an exercise you can do maybe you just want to make a note of it for now because again i'd rather give you this tool for you to do in your own time even though we have a short amount of time together today rather than not go through it at all so if you grab a piece of paper and pen you draw out the shape of a human being, however you want to do it. You want to do a stick man, stick figure, or if you're, you know, you love getting into your art and you want to do a full on drawing of a human being shape. So just the outline of a human being, the body, okay, from the top of the head all the way down to the tip of the toes. So once you've drawn out this human being shape, write a list of stresses inside the body where there might be tension so what i mean here by, by saying inside the body if you think about a time when you felt stressed um nothing too emotionally triggering of course so just for, for your own safety but just something that was quite frustrating or annoying if you think about where you felt stress in the body what can be really common is feeling tightness in the chest or stomach issues because the gut and the brain share similar chemicals so if you've got a lot of worrying thoughts going on in your mind it can impact your digestive system tension headaches um, breathing constriction, so you feel short, sharp bursts of breath, so you have to take in deep inhalations of breath. Um, you might feel sweaty palms or shaking and you know you might feel aches or tension in different points of your body um, and it's different for everyone there's so many different ways that stress can manifest so just thinking for yourself like oh, when I experience stress where do they actually manifest in my body where do I notice the tension where do I respond from and then choose those points like write a write a you know a, a point um, <clears throat> uh where, where there might be tension um and just write that list of stresses so you can get quite creative with it you can write it in different parts of the body or if you just want to write the list within the body it's totally up to you but i just wanted to explain um that point about where there is tension so we all hold tension in the body in different ways when we feel stress so what are the stresses that you're feeling in this moment what is going on for you at the moment um write this out with kindness with compassion for yourself without judgment just it is information you know this is the reality this is what i'm feeling it doesn't mean i'm always going to feel this way you know feelings change moments moment day to day week to week so in this moment this is how i'm feeling and these are the stresses that i'm going through once you've written that down observe what you've written take a moment to just reflect write it down and appreciate the opportunity that you've given yourself to do that is such an act of kindness to do that for yourself, to take 10 minutes or whatever it is to just step back from everyday life and consider well, what's actually going on, because these are all preventative measures. Remember, it's, it's not healthy for us to wait until there's a crisis or get to a point where it's just too things are too highly stressed that it's difficult to cope. 
and of course that is part of the human experience too and it's you know we've still got to be kind to ourselves as and when if that happens but when we can grab a handle on it a bit early on and we notice stress as a building that's a great opportunity to create a little bit of space for yourself between the stimulus the stress that's happening and our response to that situation to just understand a bit of perspective and what it is that we might need so you take a bit of time to observe what you've written Take some time to look it over. It creates a bit of clarity writing down. It's so therapeutic and helpful and sometimes cathartic to write down or talk about what it is we're going through because it makes it real. It puts it out in front of us and it's not just worrying thoughts going on in your mind and overwhelming you. It's something you can do. It's something that's in your control. So ask yourself on that note, what is in my control and what is out of my control? So there are some things on that list that are gonna be in your control. You can think, oh, what can I do about this? Could I speak to someone? Could I maybe choose to do something different? Could I put a boundary in place here? Could I say no? Like, what is it that I can do for myself? And what is out of my control? Because there are some things in life that just are going to be out of our control. There's not much we can do about that. But then ask yourself, how can I respond? How can I choose to respond to that situation? So, you know, it can just keep hurting me to be really angry, really upset, really frustrated about something that I can never influence or I just can't control. Okay, so what else can I do? How can I handle it in a way that's going to be helpful to me? Um, how can I be kind to myself? Um, how can I choose to look at it in a different way? Is there a positive outcome that I can see from this? And if I can't, um, is there a learning outcome that I can see from this? The final thing is stop, breathe and trust. So this is our mantra aligned with our Reignite project, which is our award-winning campaign. It's our uh, mission to prevent burnout in entrepreneurs, freelancers and business teams. So we have a free 10 week burnout prevention e-course providing um, lots of different burnout prevention strategies, which you're very welcome to sign up to for free. Um, I'll share the link to that as well. Um, so that I'll, I'll share it now. <laughs> That's um, it's www.thisiskarma.com forward slash reignite. So if you go on our website, you can also find it under the what we offer column, just the reignite project, and you can sign up for free there. So we believe in that philosophy of stop, just giving yourself the permission to just pause, take a step back, stop what you're doing, take a breath, because there's so much value in breathing correctly. I'm going to go through that in a moment and trust, essentially trust yourself because you're on this lifelong journey with yourself. You are spending 24 seven time with you. <laughs> it's important to cultivate a kind, supportive relationship with yourself. So take a moment to do this as an exercise. You're welcome to take a photo of this screen. And like I say, this is also, of course, going to be available as a recording. And uh, just give yourself permission to take a bit of time for yourself to work out what is in your control and what is out of your control, whatever the stresses may be, whatever uncertainty you may be facing. So I talked about the breath just then. The power of conscious breathing is monumental. So yes, we breathe every day, but how we breathe makes a huge difference in terms of how we feel and how we behave. When we take time to take a deep inhale of breath, and slow down the breathing and feel it expand throughout our body. Not only does it expand our lung capacity, it improves our respiratory system. It also strengthens important connections in the brain linked to stress reduction, and it calms down our nervous system, which is amazing when you think about it. So if your nerves are feeling on edge, taking in those few deep inhalations of breath and letting go, just noticing how it feels to slow down, it's really important. It also induces tranquility and improves the structure, physiology, and function of your brain. As I said before, it strengthens, import, it strengthens important connections and increases oxygen supply to different parts of the body, which also in turn lowers blood pressure and releases physical tension. So a multitude of benefits just from controlling our breathing. And that's the one function in our body we really can take control of, which is amazing. So just think about what is my internal weather system saying today? That can also be a helpful exercise. If you're feeling tense, if you're feeling like the uncertainty in your life is just getting to you too much, take a moment to breathe, take a moment to pause, slow down, reboot, and ask yourself this analogy. So thinking of your mental well-being, thinking of your physical state, your emotional health as an internal weather system, because we have the blue sky, right? We have the sun, we have um, rain, we have clouds, we have thunderstorms, lightning, we have cold, warm, there's so many different types of weather systems. And that can be a representative of how we feel in our bodies sometimes, just so much going on, like a roller coaster of emotions, different levels of tension, cold, hot, et cetera, as well, it's changes in body temperature. So when you take a moment to breathe, you could close your eyes and just visualize like a scanning down from the top of the head all the way down to the tips of your toes, just visualize what your internal weather system is saying. Is it cloudy? Is it sunny? 
Is it blue skies? Is it calm? Is there a storm brewing anywhere? And then with the next inhalation, once you've done your body scan, just take in a deep breath and visualize this bright blue sky color just enveloping your body. Visualization techniques can be incredibly powerful. And the, the point with using the blue sky as this analogy is it's supposed to remind us that that represents our full potential. We all have masses of potential within us and masses of talent and um, that's unique to each and every, every single one of us. And just as the blue sky is always there, it's constant, it never goes away, but clouds can get in the way, things can cover it up and we can forget there's the blue sky there and the sunshine, right? It's the same thing with our potential. Our natural state is peacefulness, a centeredness, a sense of balance and being grounded. It's that blue sky is within us always, but external circumstances, internal triggers can get in the way of that and, and shift our perspective. And we may lose sight of that blue sky once in a while. So I hope that's a helpful analogy to you as well. So another exercise you can do, you can do the writing exercise, you can do breathing techniques. You can also do this visualization of an internal weather system. So there's a great quote here from the Mental Health Foundation. Good mental health is characterized by a person's ability to fulfill a number of key functions and activities, including the ability to learn, feel, express and manage a range of positive and negative emotions to form and maintain good relationships with others and to cope with and manage change and uncertainty so why i really love this quote is it's not just saying good mental health has been really positive and happy all the time of course positivity and happiness comes into it but it's also that wider thinking of you know it's not just about that it's how do we express a range of emotions rather than thinking of emotions as good or bad let's not label them like that necessarily let's think of it as information you know like i'm feeling content now i'm feeling grateful or i'm feeling quite frustrated i'm feeling sad there's going to be a reason for that right so understanding your range of emotions within you um to form and maintain good relationships you know how do you cope and manage times of change and uncertainty um how do you deal with adversity as it arises what do you learn from that and how do you move forward with those learnings so it's actually how do you cope is also a, an important attribute to looking after your mental health and supporting mental wellness so on that note i really hope that the tools and resources and insights that i've provided you with today has helped you to you know consider your mental health and well-being states and to walk away from this session feeling that little bit more in control of your circumstances and what's what you're in control of in terms of your state and your responses to situations so really what the goal is for all of this is helping you to heighten and enhance your sense of self-awareness and the more we do that the more kind we are to ourselves in that way, um, the more we can understand um, how best to support ourselves in, in various different situations. I work with a lot of companies nowadays at Karma. We've supported over 300 organizations to date um, of different sizes and different team sizes on how to implement mental health support within their workplaces and how to build a long-term mental health strategy through training and support and consultancy, et cetera. And we're seeing more companies you know, implementing these healthy habits. So this example here is actually from the team at Headspace, the meditation app. So <laughs> go figure that they would practice what they preach, but they really have role modeled as well, You know that this healthy practice for so many organizations around the world. And, and I find it a delight to see you know, with the clients that we support, just how many people are empowering their staff and empowering themselves to just take a bit of time for themselves in their work day in every day in their life to just be kind and show that kindness to themselves cultivate a deeper sense of self-awareness and understand um, you know how they do have the power to choose their responses in in various situations so there's a lovely quote to finish off on here by Dr. Rahul Jandial, who is a neuroscientist and neurosurgeon of 15 years plus. He's also a best-selling author. And he, as a neuroscientist and surgeon, highlights that meditative breathing is your built-in medication where the electrical storms in your mind are quietened. It's a really poetic quote there. Um, so essentially it means a couple of minutes of quiet can give you really a chance for perspective. Um, and there's been some fascinating um, scans that have been done, brain scans of people who, um, you know, have shown high neural activity going on in their brain before meditation. And then just 10 minutes after meditation, the neural activity just like going down by half in their brain and how much things have calmed down in their bodies, which is really amazing. So please do stay connected with us. You can find further inspiration, insights and research on our website. We've got over 150 articles on our blog. We have a positive mental health podcast, Take Regular Breaks, which is now reaching 40 episodes with three seasons. And we're on social media, on Instagram, Twitter and LinkedIn. At this is Karma and at Tanya Degree. Um, so of course, as, as I mentioned before, 
We're more than happy to support if you work within a company, an organization, you feel that there needs to be, you know, a heightened sense of understanding, awareness, or you could do with improved support for, you know, nurturing a mentally healthy culture in your workplace and boosting a mental health strategy um, for your work, um, for your colleagues at work, then please do get in touch and our contact details are on our website as well. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope that you've enjoyed today and taken away lots of value. And as I always say, here's to your inner and outer success, not just what people see on the outside, but what's going on on the inside too. So I'm just gonna stop screen share now and uh, just come back to, here we go. <laughs> um, just to see if there's any questions as well. Um, Brilliant. Oh, I love how many people are tuned in today from so many different parts of the world. We had Malaysia, we had Milton Keynes, we've got Gloucestershire, we've got New Jersey. Um, great. Thank you so much, Zenat, for your kind comments. Really appreciate that. Glad you've uh, found the techniques helpful. If anyone has, else has a question, please do feel free to ask. Um, and uh, yes, we we would love to support in any way that we can. So we've got lots of resources on our website. If you go to the What We Offer section, you can see some self-paced learning e-courses. We've got our free Reignite project as well, as I mentioned. Um, we've got our mindfulness guides and e-courses, um, Karma Entrepreneur Digital Wellbeing Training. And our core offer, of course, is mental health and wellbeing training courses um, for staff, for managers, for senior leaders within workplaces, but also champions training. So we work with a dedicated group of volunteers volunteers and employees within workplaces um, to cultivate and work with them um, a long-term mental health strategy. So we go through training with them and we work with them on a consultancy basis to implement that long-term plan for their organization and a mental health policy as well. So if that rings any bells or if it um, resonates with anyone, do feel free to get in touch. So our website is thisiskarma.com forward slash contact and you can get in touch with us about any questions you have. Thank you so much, everyone, for your lovely uh, words and kind feedback. It's been really lovely to connect with you today. And I hope that those of you who are watching the replay of this also find so much value too. So I wish you all a beautiful festive season and beyond. And I look forward to reconnecting with you very soon. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thanks very much. Bye bye.